I am sure sports. You know me there, yeah. I'm coach to coach representing. I mean, I said this is right as representing for so, Omar. Oh you don't know, come get the sports over here from near and far. Oh, boy, boy, boy. Me say, I am sure sports, one thing me sure about When me say sure, that me, me not doubt Come get your sports, get it over air Come subscribe, repost and share I am sure sports, one thing me sure about When me say sure, that me, me not doubt Come get your sports, get it over air Come subscribe, repost and share yeah, If me not sure, that me, me not say it Know who score, that me, me not say it Never know the game play, that me, me not say it If me never seen a game, me not know who play For your sports news, better come over your son For your soccer news, then come over your son If you don't love sports, still come over your for the day, don't you have a love over your son? So, so, when it comes on to behavior concerning football, Jamaica is, is decent. I am sure that if we can get all of these things done, second place by the end of April, it gives us enough time before the World Cup campaign. Not afraid of no Brazil or Argentina with these crap of players. We are good enough. Remember to like, subscribe, 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 share. Listen, comment. Let me know what your thoughts are. Trick Nick Jerk Marinade gives your meats and vegetables authentic Jamaican jerk flavor. The spices are directly from Jamaica. Spices like jerk seasoning, allspice, scotch bonnet pepper, fresh scallions, thyme, ginger, and garlic. The key ingredients to a great jerk marinade. 0% sugar and low in sodium. You want to try it? All right, all right. Good evening. Welcome to I Am Sure Sports. I am your host, Manning's Man, and we're here again with our next big one, an exclusive, a special one. Yeah, a big, 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 big one with a big, 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 big athlete. But I think this 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 athlete, track star, is a bigger footballer than he is. I think he should have he should have he should have been playing some football. He would have been a lethal winger. Probably all playing for the Gunners. You understand me, the best team in the world. But he chose the life of track and field. And he did well, well, well. Though he was plagued by injuries, he did very, very well. I mean, one of the athletes that is loved and adored by many, many, many Jamaicans. I mean, you know, every time you think about the beginnings of Usain Bolt, this athlete come to, come to, comes to mind. I remember going to Champs and seeing him and Usain Bolt um, at it in their early, early years but we're going to bring him on in a couple of minutes um let's just say a big thank you to the sponsors of this video first they are prestige finance prestige finance where they're lending a helping hand when you need it the most you can call prestige finance at 876-884-7390 they will offer you a loan of up to 100,000 jamaican dollars with a uh, low 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 interest rate zero to four percent and there's no processing fee and same day processing also to launch legacy where they handle risk and seek legacy for all your personal insurance needs in canada and the usa visit launch legacy at launchlegacy.com or call or text them at 647-989-0782 to all the viewers and the subscribers so good to have you i see fresh god karumi chris romans and many others are already on Please remember to shoot in your questions as we go along. Thanks for all the support on the platform. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. So we have with us Mr. Jermaine Gonzalez. I don't know when we're playing football, they call him Guns. You understand me? Um, in fact, there was a game recently and the man, the man fired one off the right foot from outside the box. Boom! You understand me? I think Mount Pleasant will have to repair the nets and the goal because he thumped it so hard. Um, so we're going to talk to him about that and, and why he he's no longer in track and field or what he's doing right now. So let's um, welcome to I Am Sure Sports, Mr. Jeremy and Gonzalez. <laughs> yeah, man. Thanks for having me. You are welcome. You're welcome. Man. How are you doing? How are you doing? Not bad, you know. We have to give thanks for life for uh, that has been happening for the past year and a half, two years. You know, we're here and we're healthy, so giving thanks for that. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. Listen, I know, I, I mean, I, there, there's so much, right? So we do, let's see see how we can do this in stages. I want you to, for the persons who, who they probably didn't see you running a whole lot, right? Mm -hmm. Tell them where did it all start for you from your early beginnings in track and field? And did you start out as a track and field person? Because you look like you're a better footballer still, you know. <laughs> but did you start out in track and field or were you a footballer? track and field person then you went into track and field left football or how, where did it all start how did it all start and tell us about your time in champs and all of that well as i said before um i started playing football for sure uh, football is is my first love still is my first love <laughs> um i played Dakasta cup for jesus goalie um oh uh, we didn't have an a, a outstanding team, but I played and, and, and scored a number of goals for the Tatious Um But growing up, you know, I, I, I tried to do every sport. I played a little basketball, I played a little football, I played a little volleyball, a little cricket. I, um, people actually <laughs> used to call me Shanda Paul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I was, I, was, I was probably a better cricketer than, than any of the other sports, you know, growing up as a young boy. But um, so you played head love... cup? No, I didn't play professional cricket on the community league and, okay. and in prep in primary school, but I didn't take it from there because to be honest, um football was the love. Um cricket was just fun for me. But um so I, you, 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 I, hold on, so you played the Costa Cup for Tasha's Golden? Yeah man, I played I played that for, for two and a half seasons. Whoa. Yeah, man, I scored a number of goals, so say you check the record, you see goals <laughs> on the one day, you know, probably like 15 or 16 thereabouts. So you must be the top goal scorer for Tasha's goal in, in, in school, in, in football? Maybe, 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 yeah, because Tasha's hasn't been doing that, 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 well, at football. But I started in under 16, I know, that's when people realized how good I was at football, because a lot of people knew me as a cricketer, as I said before. Because if you go back to to to, to um, Browns uh, where Tishos is or, or Watermount where where I used to attend um, primary school, a lot of people still call me Shandopal. So oh. I still bear that name to today. So a lot of people didn't know that I could play football apart from people who actually saw me playing. But growing up, I was born in St. Catherine, you know, raising in Kitty. Let me just let me just put this up because somebody trying to ramp with your football in legacy, you know. I just want to put this up. A guy named Barsama said, my team, let him quit football because Olawa beat him to the dust and he couldn't take it anymore. So he chose track. <laughs> uh, why? That's not true. The first game I actually won in that under 16, we beat Olawa high in that <laughs> match and I scored the, the winning goal 2-1. Wonderful. Yeah, so I, I, I have to disagree with it, but <laughs> I, I must be honest, Olava was a better team overall. Yeah, man. I must be honest. But as, as I was saying before, you know, I grew up in um, Kitsi Town, a little community where, you know, we do play a lot of sport, but there wasn't any real development. We didn't have a team, we didn't have a coach, we didn't have proper field. So that's where it, it started for me. And, um, it was easier to get into track and field because, you know, tracks is not, uh, don't take as much organization as football or even cricket. You know, you, you just you just need a shoes and, and, and you go out there and run. Or even if you don't have a shoes, you run without the shoe. But it started getting serious when um, I was in high school. When I was in high school, I... I um, Yeah, man. All right. All right. So, yeah, interesting story. Boss Thomas, the man shoot your, your story through the window, Boss Thomas, man. Your story not real, man. Beat Old Harbor. 2 1, knock them out of under 16, Boss Thomas. Fix up your story. <laughs> Fix up your story. <laughs> Fix up your story. Fix up your story, Boss Thomas. Both you beat up the man. Nothing like that. Yeah, but people, yeah, man, send in your comments and all of those things. Um, and let's 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 talk with Jeremy and Gonzalez. Yeah, man, um, gonna be an interesting time. It's going to be an interesting, interesting time. Yes, 
yeah all right let's see, let's see if we can get this done yeah yeah so the man played cricket volleyball football and did track and field yeah, yeah. man my, my apologies <laughs> um yeah so as i was saying it's track and field started seriously for me when i went to high school at teachers golden and i must tell that it was purely accidental because i knew i was fast because i i you know i ran at sports day and stuff like that before i i, I went to high school and we had sports they had no intention of running because as i said football was the love that's what i wanted to do and you know there was a race going on and you know people were betting saying that this guy is fast and i'm like no he's not that fast and everybody said you can't roll if you can't you can roll if i'm like all right put up some money so you know everybody back out at 50 and say let's go and i went around at 200 with this guy and i, I won the race that boat 20 meters ahead of everybody else and that's when teachers coach principal everybody was like oh, yeah no, you have to join the track team you have to join the track team i was a bit reluctant to do it because as i said i didn't want to run i wanted to play football but when we had camp now then my friends was going and you know they say it's fun and whatever and i said all right i'm going to give it a try and i must say the rest is history and that's in first form right um actually i didn't go to high school until like grade eight because i went to all eight school I went oh, okay to okay so, so in, in in all eight school you never did like um what they call them all eight school champs or primary school champs no yeah i did i did i actually ran for my parish but i didn't take it seriously so it's not oh, okay. something that i'm really thinking about i i, I yeah. took it seriously when i started in high school, high school. Yeah. right so that's where that's where i took it serious and you know, I, I must say that it was instant success for me, and that's that probably one of the reasons why I, I I I stayed in track and field because the first year I did tracks, I made Jamaica team. The first, really? first year, yeah, I ran. The first year I ran at champs, I won the four hundred class three boy. Class, and so hold on, so you never wow, so you didn't do class three either. No, I started at class two. You Second started class at class two, and your first year class two, you run the you run four hundred and you won. Yes, I won. I won the Whoa. first year I ran at, and and then I won the second year as well, first year class one. But before that, so you did only one year in class two. One year in class two, then I go straight to class one the next year. But you know what was amazing about me winning and actually making the Jamaica team um, the first year. I went to Royal Youth in Hungary. This is all this is I mean the first year of track and field. First year. Whoa. First year. Whoa. And, um what was 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 so good about it is that I went on a team that consists of UCN the great UCN Bolt. Yeah. Um that that didn't even make the finals. And I, I made the finals I actually won a bronze medal. So I raised both. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So the first World U Championship you went to, that team right. had Usain Bolt. Right. And Usain Bolt did not make the finals in the in the 200 or the 400 that time. In the 200. In the 200. In the 200. And you made a 400 final or one goal for bronze. One bronze medal. I was the only male athlete on that team to win a medal. And that, that team was like people like Anisha McLaughlin, Tesfa Lati. Um, Kimani Williams, um, you know, somebody, the, 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 the Edwin Alling and Manchester girls, I don't quite remember all of them. Yeah. You know, I always boast that, you know, I, I was a star before you see it, you know, a lot of people don't know it. <laughs> I was a star before him. I was collecting medal on, on the international stage long before Whoa. him. Yeah. Whoa. So, so you remember, all right, so what I want to ask is, so. That, did you did Jamaica do the four by four at that world you no, championship? It, no, it was it was a four by four. It was a medley. I think it was one, two, three, four. Okay, okay. Yeah, we didn't do a four by four. At okay. Royal Youth, we, we did a medley. I don't so think you, we got a medal okay. in, so. in that. But you remember your first finals in the four hundred meter four hundred meters at champs? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Clearly, um. I I won Central Champs. You know, Tishos is from the Central here. Yeah. Um, so 
I didn't run against any of the KC or the JC or the Calabar people coming into champs. So a lot of people didn't really know about me and they didn't expect me to win. But um, I, I beat Patrick Lee. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. Yeah, man, Patrick Lee, yes, yes. I won. I beat Patrick Lee. Patrick Lee was the favorite and I, I was a slow starter. You know, I came out the corner way behind and, you know, with that big kick and I ran past everybody to the finishing line. So, you know, from there, I really You went to Carifta, as I would have gone to Carifta. Yeah, and man, then to... I had a stellar junior career and I won almost everything as a junior. I was third at World Juniors and I was second in the 4 by 4 as well. I won CAC, I win Carifta, I win most, most of the junior meets. Regionally, I win, I win everything. It's only when I go internationally, sometimes I was second or third. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. So I had, I had a really successful junior career. All right, so all right, so so this is first. I mean, so many things happening, man. People, a lot of people gonna learn a lot of things today. So you go into class one. So your first year went to the world. You you, you did all of that. You go to class one now. Yeah. All right, you won the four hundred again. First year yeah. class one. First year class. Was, one. was it the same class two that came up, or did you meet any bigger athlete in terms of no, name? No, man, man, I ran against uh, second Clark. In Clark, class yes, one. yes. So this was 2002 now. Remember, we had World Juniors in 2002 at the National Stadium. At the National Stadium, yes. That's right. where you and you, had, you, you and you sent Bolt in the right. 400. No, you see, around the 200 and one. I ran the 400 and was third again there. Yeah, I was yeah, yeah. And in the right. four by four. Yeah. But but you know that because of World Junior, they didn't have the, 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 the championship at the National Stadium. It was at GC Foster. If you remember... Oh. It was at GC first yes, they were yes. preparing the, the track at the stadium to, to host World Juniors. World, yes. Right. So so maybe that's why a lot of people don't remember that first class one victory that I had because it was a little at light GC was taken first, up Yeah, it's not at the national. That is true, right. you know. That's a right. very good point. So, so Seku, Seku Clark, yes, yeah, Seku Clark. Was in there for JC with with his father yeah. Mike. Yeah, yeah, and again, yeah. Again, 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 it was a JC man who was the favorite, and and, and it was similar <laughs> race. So they could get out really hard, and I came in late at the line, and I, I nip him at the line, you know. So, I mean, I I, I did well at champs. This was my last year, you know, in two thousand and three, where that's when I go up against Bolt at the stadium, and I got injured. In, in yeah, you got injured in the final. finals. Right. Yeah. But to tell you the truth. In, in in that year, I did 46 one indoors a couple of weeks before, so I was in outstanding shape. It's just because I got a slight injury a couple of weeks before because I was going to double, I was going to run the 200 and the 400, so I get a slight strain and 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 I didn't recover properly from that. And as you see, that race was fast, so I kind of went into overdrive, you know, trying to win the race. Yeah. So that's when the injury. You know, happen. And today we still argue about that because I knew I would have won the race and Bolt is like... Oh, yeah, you and Bolt argue about it. And yeah, he was going to say, he, he, he was said to you, you're a fool, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it is to be honest with you, the, far, yeah. the people, who, people who know track and field know that 46 one indoors, especially for a guy like me that is over six foot, is no joke running and, and that would probably equal to a 44 high 45 little. So that's yeah. why I know that I would have won that race, you know? Yeah. And at yeah. that time, you say he was afraid of me. I can't tell a straight on you. He was afraid. You, so, he was so afraid of you? As soon as he <laughs> see me catch him, he might go buck me, man. I tell you. <laughs> if you watch back the race, look. At, at 60 meters, 70 meters to go, he was looking behind. Guys, was wondering what was going on. How goes on? Catch oh, me. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, listen, but, so while you were at Tasha's Golden, right, doing all of this, did, did did were you ever being like recruited because you didn't go overseas to college because you, you trained in Jamaica and all that? Did, right. did did any of the high schools come and say, no man, come do six for me here? And you decided, no, I'm staying with my coach, I'm staying at Tasha's Tasha Golden. Yeah, man, man, I mean, uh, literally, uh, most of the schools, but one school in particular, St. Diego, because, you know, I'm a St. Saint Saint Catherine. Catherine. Yeah, and yeah. I can remember Bert Cameron. Bert Cameron was there at the time. I can remember him saying, Hey, man, you cousin, you know, man. See, we're Indian and stuff, trying to, to convince me. <laughs> but, you know, I look at it and I say, I am at Tishos, limited resources, and I'm doing well. So, why do I need? I'm the star man here. If I leave yeah. Tishos and go to a JC or a KC, I probably won't be the star man because if we have people running, 
the prime time events that the hundred and the two hundred that might take away some of my shine. So let us stay where yeah. you know. I'm comfortable and I'm doing well, so there's no need to leave and go nowhere else. So I stayed at Tatius. Um, for for why we stayed at Jamaica, no? To be honest with you, I'm 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 not I'm I'm a very I'm a family man. Put it this yeah. way. You know, I, I grew up with um three brothers and a sister, my mother and father living in in, in the same house. So I'm a yeah. family man. I didn't want to leave to go nowhere. You know, I was very okay. attached to, to my family. And we got the opportunity to stay through the High Performance Training Center that was funded by the IWF. So we were well taken care of yeah. that yeah. way. So you see You didn't I, need to leave. Yeah. No, we didn't need to leave. You know, we were going Because to you actually you actually went back the, the, so in two thousand and two you did the world junior juniors. And I went back to school in 2003. Right. School. And got injured at Champs. Right. Didn't and go then, to Carifta. No. Right. Right. Yes. And then I, I, do, I, I actually just, you know, rest the whole season. And then right. we joined the High Performance Center. I went pro. I went pro. After I went that. pro right after that. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. And you say, well taken care of you. Because you and Bolt were both at, um, at High Performance when, yeah. when it started out. Really, like you two were part of the. I would say the prime athletes at that time because both of you were like neck and neck in terms of right, right male right. youth at track and field right at that time. You were the big names. Right. I mean, we were probably the only two athletes that could have and got a lot of offer to go overseas, you know, to, to any of the colleges that we wanted to go to. And we decided that, you know, no, we want to stay in Jamaica. So we were probably the first two you know, at least as I said before, with this kind of talent and got so much offer and, 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 and denied and, and stayed in Jamaica and trained in Jamaica, Jamaica and, and um, made it from Jamaica, you know, internationally yeah. and, and, and was very competitive, you know, yeah. at all, all time. When I was running, I mean... I mean, so I'm I'm just give it right, so after 2003, no, you, you recovered. I mean, just, yeah, just tell us, dear, you know, because now you're a pro first year pro going on how that was and then boss thomas is asking i don't know who dorian or jerry are he's asking ask him who fa faster him dorian or jerry ah i'm not sure who i'm talking about dorian or jerry i'm not sure i'm not sure who okay man don't know boss go ahead yeah, yeah but but um i'm not sure but um yes as i said then I went to High Performance Training Center. I did my background training and everything. And 2004, I actually made the Olympic team my first time of trying. So I went to the Olympics in 2004. I actually made it for the flat events in the 400. I was replaced. I mean, today I still, you know, trying to figure out why, why I wasn't given the chance to run. That was, was probably the first disappointment for me, apart from getting injured um, in O3, you know, in my time of track and field, because as I said before, I started my first year, I made the national team, I ran for Jamaica and I got a medal. So my first disappointment came when I went to the Olympics in 04, I was supposed to run the flat 400 and I was taken out for no apparent reason because I didn't run the the qualified standard at the trials. I think at the time the qualified standard was like 45.5 or 45.4. I didn't run the qualified standard and they said to me that, you know, guns, they need to get the standard. And I went to Europe the same year and I ran about three times under the qualified standard. So I was expecting to run. And you see, it's a bit of, it's a bit of, experience. yeah. There's a lot of that that was happening at that time because there are a couple of athletes who complained about. I mean, you understand me. We just want to stick right. to your story, but just to know that it was very prevalent that time for yes, athletes yes. to be replaced. Yes, and and, and 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 I'm going to go on here and say it. I I don't blame the J tree for 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 this. Is is sometimes the people that they put in the power to make the decision, and people are are making decision not based on talent and not based on how well people is performing, but based on their likings. 
And that's what that's exactly what happened to me because the guy that they put in to run over me is somebody that I beat every time I run on the circuit. If I was six, he was seven. I beat the man every single race we run in. So did they explain to you? Did it was it explained to you like there, there was no proper explanation? The, the, the excuse was that they were use a more experienced person, and I was thinking to myself as a youngster. Whoa. How oh, do you gain experience? You gain experience by doing something over and over. And it's unmerit. You 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 qualified. So unmerit you should run. Exactly. And the funny thing about it, we had four, we had three people doing the 400. So why why there are two other people, you know? But it was unfortunate and I'm bitter about it to, to, to today. You know, every time I speak about it, I get a little emotional because the guy made the finals and I was beating this man. So I, I don't see why you would have been in the finals, you believe, yeah. And then, and yeah. then to have injury to insult, I ran on the four by four. Listen, I, well, I was the junior and I was the young boy. I was like 19 or 18 plus. Running with, with people like Davian Clark, um, Michael Blackwood, um, Brandon Simpson. The, you know, those kind of people who are very experienced athletes. Yeah. I was supposed to run the second leg, right? They took me off the second leg again saying that they need somebody with a little more experience to run the second leg and you know what happened the man that they put on the second leg take the button and cut over as in get the button he <laughs> didn't run around the track <laughs> and cut over on the back stretch and got me disqualified <laughs> so what leg were you going to do the third leg they put me on the third leg but i was supposed to run the second leg <laughs> they took me off the, the second leg and said they need the more experience and the man that they put on cut over as he get the button oh jesus and the man that took me off of the second leg is somebody that watched me run four four by i did more four by four than anything in my, when i was in high school because i didn't have a good team i run second leg almost every time for tasha's goal and i had a one man that could give me a good start so I always try to get the button in the second leg and give yeah, them like extended lead. Yeah, yeah, extended lead. So I was yeah. very experienced when it comes to running <laughs> second leg, and the guy Whoa. that took me knew this. That was the first Olympic. The first Olympic start. Games was very disappointing. It was disappointing, and the worst thing about it, the only team that could have beaten us was the USA. So I would have an Olympic silver medal because all three guys made it to the finals of the 400 flat. So we had a great team. Whoa! So it was a. So what about your coach? What about like? What isn't that like? Like all right. So on the other side, I always hear like Stephen Francis talking for his. I mean, I know your coach is not really an outspoken person still, because Glenn Mills is kind of more reserved than. No, 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 no. I wasn't. I wasn't coached by Glenn Mills at the time. I was coached by Fitz Coleman, and 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 you hit the nail on the head. That's the thing. I didn't have anybody to speak out for me. Anybody to stand up for me. You know, if if I was trained by Steve Francis, there's no way they could have taken me out of that race. I know that I know that for sure because yeah, they yeah. tried with Shelly and Fraser. Right, that's what I was saying, but I didn't and want Shelley to bring and up. Fraser yeah. went on to win the Olympics, and Shelly and Fraser is no arguably the one of the best female sprinter of all yeah. time. Yeah, you yeah, know? you don't they, they, you don't get to take out Steve Francis athlete out of any no, race that they qualify no, for. No, yeah. and it's something that I'm very upset about. And as I said before, I'm not blaming I'm not blaming the J tree, you know. Because sometimes the J tree are fine people, you know, to make these decisions, you know. And sometimes yeah. when you give a man a job, you have to respect his 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 um his decision, right? Decision, yes, yes. So, so I'm not here to blame the J tree. Yeah. I was taken out because of personal reasons and so your, your first was... Olympic Games, you qualified for the four hundred, you mm -hmm. qualified for the relay, you were mm -hmm. taken out of the flat four hundred. To change your position in the relay, the team got disqualified, so you never even got a chance. Exactly. And and to be honest with you, if you go back and watch the video of the four by four, I was the one who bring the big man them in. Remember, I said, little boy, you know. Junior. All right, in the heats, in the heats, in the heats. Yeah, yeah. You brought them yeah. back into it, and then Davy and Clark, and then yes. Davy and Clark run the last leg. Right, and be yeah. hang up. They gave me the back now about six, and I have to run my heart out and bring them back into the race to qualify for the final. Only to hear that I get disqualified because the man cut over. Yeah. So I, I tell you, it was it was it was a sad yeah, one. That is two thousand. That is two thousand and four. That was a very because, yeah, because you you had just sat out like I said most of the year. You went 
um, 2003 went into Europe and just coming back. 2004 was possibly your, one of your better year. years. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. It was a breakout year for me because sitting here, I knew that I would have made the 400 final for sure. I would have made the finals, you know. But I mean, you know, that's where you go in sports. I mean, in life in general. So sometimes you have to pick up yourself and go again. And and I and I, I did that. And even though I got a lot of injuries, and you know, I I, took, I know that my full potential was not achieved because of the injuries. You know, I'm still happy. I think I did well. You know, and I was one of the the, the person who, who who was a trailblazer who bring back. 400 running in Jamaica. That is true. The forefront. That is Whether true. Whether you want to believe it or not, I'm not here to boast, but it's true. It's true. I it's was true. the first 400 man to run win a Diamond League to be competing against some of the greatest 400 runners of all yeah. time. The Jeremy Warner and the Lashawn Merritt and the Kiran. Yeah, Chief. man. You were in an era. You were in an era, era of some tough 400 runners, surreal, and where you were exactly. carrying the Jamaican flag and the Diamond League and, oh, and all of those things. Listen. Yeah. As you said before, I know that I'm one of the, the persons that, that, that people really cared about and wanted to see do well. But, you know, so many time I know that I don't get the respect that I deserve. But, yeah. you know, I don't say it go, you know. Yeah, you but I mean, know, I mean, but I you're, the truth really. is doing it, but you retired early too, you know. You have a, I mean, the injuries was a mate. I'm, I'm wondering if, did you do any mate? Did you, is it that you didn't do surgery? You did surgery. Did you, did, is it that you didn't rest enough? Because people ask, Listen, why man. every time I he came to the big thing, I he always injured. What is, is he I over I training? I what I is it? Write, I need to write a book, man. You need to do I that. I need to write a book because a lot of people didn't know what I was going through. You know, I did, I did three surgery. Two on my left knee and one on my right knee. The first one I did was in 2010, and that was a good year for me. 2010, I finished as number two in the, in, in, in the whole world. I broke yeah. the national record in 2010. I, I did sub 45 seconds about seven or eight times. And after my last race, I ran 45, 90 something at Berlin in Germany and won that race. And the next yeah. day, I went and did a surgery on my knee. To be honest with you, it was a minor surgery. It was like one of those microscopic, just like cleaning out the knee because yeah. it was wearing. So it was mo not major. But then I, I came back in, in 2011 and started training. And, 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 you know, I got a little... The knee wasn't better fully. You know, when I started training, I got a lot of swelling and a lot of pain because I wasn't properly prepped, you know, on what I was supposed to do in terms of rehab and those stuff. So... You know, they, they, oh. they spoke about the, the, the surgery, like, you know, it's just a minor thing, man. You're good, man. You're resting. Oh, you, you probably went back training hard and it too early. Right. So, so and, and then, you know, it kind of set me back, but I was okay. Remember 2012, I went to the World Championship. I was 14 in, in the 400 finals, and we got a bronze medal in the 4x4. Four four. In, in the 4x4, four four, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. But then the next thing, you know, I had a bone tumor. A lot of people didn't know this. I had a bone tumor in my left knee. I did two oh. surgeries in the space of not even a year and a half to remove the bone tumor. I did Whoa. a surgery and, 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 and after six or seven months, the, the tumor went come back bigger than what it was before. So I had to go back in the knee and do the same Whoa. surgery I did. And you know, with the bone, when, when you drill your bone, because basically you drill, they drill out the bone, you know, to get out that, 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 that tumor. Yeah. And and put chemical to burn it out. That's that the, it don't come it do, back. Don't come back again. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. To get and, and it's like fixing a wall where you you mix cement and you pack it back and you, you you smooth it out. That's what they did with my bone. And I had to wait for almost a year and a half until the bone is properly healed Whoa. to go and run back on it again because I couldn't put any pressure on the leg. It, so a lot yeah. of people don't know that I was experiencing this thing because I didn't come public and talk. Because when you do that, sometimes people think you find excuses. And I'm yeah. not a person for an excuse. My coaches look at me all the while and them shake them head with tears in them eyes because them say, boy, guns, I never coach nobody who work harder than you. It's not the lack of trying. It's not the lack of effort make you know, make it to the ice, make you not be a Olympic champion, make you not know, rich from this. It's because the injuries. You understand? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I experience all of this without even... So how did you, how were you able to cope in those times of surgery knowing that boy I can't be running no I mean no more diamond league because that that last surge that you did is it, um, around a year you're out for 
Mm-hmm. Listen, listen, here. listen to me, man. It was tough. It's, it's just luckily, I'm a family man. I had my family to support me, you know, who was always there and, you know, encouraging me. And in 2011, I got my first, my first child, you know. My son yeah. was born in 2011. And, you know, that kind of keep me motivated. I mean, I just started making real money from the sport that I've been doing for so long. Yeah. Not really making, you know, money from it like that. And I just started making real money where I could help my family because I came from a poor family, you know. I, a lot of my money that I made in my in 2010 went back to helping my family. Buying land, building house, make sure that my mother and my father have a proper house. Yeah, living, yeah. Concrete structure inside, bathroom, kitchen and stuff like that. I, I was, I'm from a poor family, so it was, it was, it was, it was tough knowing that, you know, I just start making some money and I'm looking to take care of myself now and boom, I, I, these injuries come in along now and, and, and I'm not sure yeah. that I, if I was going to be able to run like that again. And it turned out that way because I went to, to London, of course, I made the team again to London. And yes, that's so where 12, 2012. 2012, yeah, 2012. Uh, Right, so this is almost a year. Uh, well, a year because you did surgery in twenty eleven. Right. So twenty twelve, mm-hmm. almost a year after you went to the Olympic. Yes. Right. And, and 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 it was disappointing again because you know I was struggling because I did the whole knee surgery. You know, yeah. I didn't get to train properly. You know, I was feeling a little niggling here and there, and I I I wasn't prepared. Yeah. I wasn't prepared. I finished like. Fourth or fifth in the east running in the east, yeah, yeah. Running 46 to for a man who's a consistent 44 man. You understand? Yeah. So so it was disappointing. And then I went and I I ran the four by four and got injured on the four by four team, which which is always the worst part because remember running on a four by four, not just you again, you have to Yeah, yeah, team yeah, yeah. That was I think a lot know? of people are saying that why they make him run? Why exactly. they make him you remember you remember you remember that yeah. I, I, that's so much bashing and, and yeah, and yeah. People are very that. hard because people never know. People are saying that but them I, know him in and put him out there. And he did him. You remember? Yeah, I, but I, nobody I, never I, knew that you, you did it because you were coming out surgery because it just start. Here's what happened, Jeremy, which is a lot of people just start. You were just injured. They never know it was surgery that you did that was causing it. So when they saw you at the Olympics, no one then you got injured because many people thought like, okay, Jamaica is going to get medal, and then. Why you put Jeremy and Gonzalez out here? And you know, yeah. same all is get Yeah, yeah, but go ahead. I, 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 I had to learn to walk again, jog, run, sprint. I had to learn everything again. Because after doing a yeah. major surgery like that, you lose all of your muscles, you know. Your quad, your hamstring, your calf, everything on that foot went. Uh, it's like an old man, skin and bone. So you have to, you have to do. I was swimming. I was going to the gym. I was doing everything. You know, I, I, I don't know how I even make it back to a level where I can run and still make Jamaica team after all of that. You know, yeah. and, and father got alone, no. And, and, and it comes down to like it's just the, the, the talent that I had. You know? Yeah, yeah. What was the support of other athletes around you during this hard time? Because by this year, also a change camp. You were no longer at um, high performance. You were with yeah. Cameron Blazers. Right. Yeah. To be honest, I, I didn't get a lot of support, apart from my family. And, and a lot of people wasn't really sure what was happening with me. And, and that, that's partly on me because, you know, I kept it quiet. I never yeah. really, you know, I never want to be no little poor thing. And, you know, so I, I kept it quiet. Um, Sports Development Foundation, I must say, you know, when they assisted me with, with, with covering some of the doctor bills because I was spending a lot of money to do surgery. I didn't surgery. do none of my surgery in Jamaica. I did all of them in Miami. Oh. The first one I did on my own, nobody knew where I get the money from to do it. When I had to do the second one, oh, that's when I said, no, I am representing Jamaica from 16 year old. I, I must can get some assistance from Jamaica to help me. And that's when Sports Development Foundation chipped in and helped me with the second one. Okay. But, but at least per se, no, I never speak much to nobody about what was happening. A lot of them, yeah, reach out and ask me what we're doing and if it's coming on or whatever. But a lot of them did not know what exactly was happening with me. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah what is yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. To clear up the, the, the Olympic as always I want to make things clear. Yeah, man, go ahead, go ahead. I'm not here to bash nobody or blame nobody, but to clear up the Olympic thing where people were saying, Boy, why Jeremy and Rona know the same injury. They beg me for run. <laughs> when, when I ran the four by the four hundred, the flat four came I, fifth. And came fifth, and I realized, boy, I'm not, I'm not in any shape to, to really compete. My coach came to me, Mr. Cameron, and he can attest to it and said, boy, guns, I eat this. We are take the season, we are go back to the drawing board, and we're coming back. That was the decision that was made. One particular coach came to my room and begged me to run. Said, guns, you have the experience, you know, even not at 100%. You can't do better than some of them money where I run. No, wow. I finished the race 18, I ran 46 to walk, walk off and track, and I was okay to run. So I never expect that I was going to get injured. There's no way I would go out there and know that I'm injured to run. I'm not yeah. a fool. I've been doing this for a long time. I was a veteran at that stage. You know? So I was asked to run. I was yeah. asked to run the race. I wasn't planning to run the race. I was asked to run, and, and I took the opportunity to represent my country because they asked me to do it. Yeah, which you always do. You always, I, I think, I think, I think, and this is the thing. I think people never understood some of the things you went through because, to tell you the truth, I think you, when you come on to, I think even more so than Asaf, I'll say this. You and you saying Bolt kind of pull back a whole generation of people into track and field in Jamaica. And right. you were like two. Until he had like the, the, the Shelleys and the Asafa started doing all of those. It was really, even in those World Youth Championships and all of those things, it was really Gonzalez Bolt, Gonzalez Bolt. But right. I don't think a lot of people knew what was going on with you. People just always saw you from champs and things. They always had this thing that you and Bolt are too tall and don't always get injured. And mm -hmm. Bolt kind of got over his later on because I remember Bolt pulled up as well, and people were give, really giving him a hard time. So I mm -hmm. think because people didn't know some of what was happening, it may have been how they they they, they reacted the way that they did. And and the truth is though that I don't think people look back at 400 meter running probably in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. Who who are they going to talk about? Listen to me, man. I am the most consistent quarter mile of Jamaica have been in the past 20 years. If you watch them youth around nowadays, we have we have whole heap of talent, you know. No doubt about it. You know. We have talent. Yeah. When you look from people like Bluefield, you look like Chris Taylor, like Taylor, Taylor yeah. Nathan Allen and them youth there. Eh? A yeah. whole heap of talent. But none of them is consistent. Them run 43 today and they can't do it back again for the rest of them life. I, and them, them struggling to run break 45 seconds. When I was running, I was a consistent 44 man. Every yeah. race I run, you can't look for me run at least 44 or something. So them youth I don't have no consistency. And one of the problems is that they are afraid of the event. You can't run 400 and further at the bus. Yeah. And that's the biggest problem. That's why you see Bluefield keep on trying to sprint and he's not a sprinter and he keep getting injured. Nathan Allen and them you that for me Nathan Allen is probably the most talented one in my opinion in of the natural quarter mile uh, cadence everything him have the ability to be a consistent 44 low 43 man but he's afraid of the event and you cannot be afraid Nathan of Nathan Allen event. Nathan Allen yes he's afraid of the event really of Chris Taylor is probably the only one that is not afraid but Chris Taylor is at a disadvantage because he's short, he's small. If you check the history of 400 running, you can you can count on your, your one hand or on three finger how much quarter mile has, has done well at that. What, what about Chris? What, what about the from, from Bahamas? Chris, Chris, what's his name? Chris Brown. That's, yeah. one of them. That's one of them. And Chris Brown is not small. He's what about short. Michael Johnson? Michael Johnson is not small. Michael Johnson almost six footer man. He has about, he's not short. Okay. Jeremy okay. Warner is close to six foot two. So may I tell you, most of the quarter milers that do well are relatively tall people. Because it takes you know more effort, you know, when you're short for on that track. You're 400 last sprint, you know. A lot of people see me and say, Boy, goes a long distance, bro. Now, it's not a long distance. People coming through the 220.3. 
if you check yeah. the real record, divide it by four. The real record is 43, zero three. Divide it by four. All of those 100 meters is under 11 seconds. You have to be running. So it's a sprint yeah, race. Yeah, yeah. Is that that's why it's so at. demanding yeah. and that's why it's the hardest race on the track. Yeah. You know? All right, well, we have some we have some people in the comment section. I'm gonna take some of the comments and thing. Um, I think Paul Marriott was saying earlier that he remember um people wanted Omar McLeod for the Olympic, to um so others earn their spot over him. We end up with two medals in that event. Right. Uh, all right, I think the last Olympic they were trying to get Omar McLeod in because I think right. he, <clears throat> yeah, which is which is what going back to what you were saying earlier. Mm -hmm. And then Rob Simit says he remember the showdown in the rain that never happened. That's yeah, right. that was that was champs. I understand what he's saying. That With was the handbolt? When me and Bolt supposed to, to run that race, yeah. Yeah, were you happy that it rained? I disappointed. <laughs> it never matter. It never matter really whether it rained or what. Like I, 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 I was disappointed I got injured because I was going to say yeah. the record straight, but you know. <laughs> Wait until I talk to what you're gonna ask him. We're gonna laugh off my head. But it's a um the, does Jeremy and Harbour any thoughts about coaching specifically helping to improve our struggling men 400 meters program? Yes, I, I mean I'm I'm into coaching now. I've been coaching for ever since I retired, but I was working with smaller kids at the prep school level. So I I I'm in my like fourth or fifth year at St. Peter and Paul Prep School. Okay. I recently started coaching at, at Papin High School. I am there for like three months now. And I also they, they, a they had a good program there because they have they, they produce some good um um right. the two sisters um a couple of other athletes. Right, they, they, right, they, right, yeah. right, right. But they haven't been training since COVID. So you know it's basically a rebuilding process. Because they had a good coach in um, Miss Osborne, who, who, who's a part of NVP as well. So they had a good coach over there. It's just okay. a matter of, of, of maybe she's, you know, going where, where, where she's, you know, being paid better or, or just want a different um, chapter, you know. So I'm there now. You know, she, she set the foundation. So I kind of, you know, take it up from there and, and, and hopefully, you know, can see Papi producing some 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 good athletes because they do have talent up there. It's only that, you know, a lot of the kids, the discipline is poor. A lot of them don't know where it takes, but I'm there to guide them. And, and so far, it's been going good. And as I told you before, I'm also a part of an academy, Dare to Dream Sporting Academy, where we, we own a, not only track and field, but we do football, we do swimming. Uh, we also host summer camps in, in, in July, almost every year, where we have over 100 kids you know, taking part on a daily basis. Um, where where does the academy operate from? Where Right now, we started at Buey. You know, we were okay. using the swimming pool, we were using the trap, but now we're at, in Mona at Buttercup Park. Okay. You know, Buttercup oh, Park. yeah, yeah, yeah. That man and yeah. for anybody who is listening or, or anybody that hear this um if you want to get involved then you know you can go on instagram i mean dare to dream sporting academy mm -hmm. just type in dare to dream sporting academy and you will get all the information regarding you know contact number email whatever you want you can get it from there if you want to be a part of the program okay 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 all right there, it's called dare to dream academy Dare to Dream Sporting Academy. Sporting Academy. And it focuses on swimming, football, and track right. and field. And it's at right. Buttercup, Buttercup Park. Oh, that's Mona. Mona. Even though Mona right. Primary. Yeah, man. Just up the road from Mona yeah. Primary. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So it's not it's not hard to it's not hard to find. It's not hard to find. It's not hard to no. find. But in the time of retirement, have you ever been encouraged? Like, listen, come on, man. Give this thing one more shot. Or you just know that, hey, this is it, man. It don't even... You know, um, uh, I get it every day. I get it every day. Cause you say you have a lot of people who believe in the challenge, and and, and people who really disappointed like myself that I didn't get a chance to fulfill that talent. Some people say it jokingly. Some people serious. But for me, you know, I know my limits, and I know that you know, with all these injuries, and this is four hundred. It's not like it's a it's a it's a hard race. So train for the 400 is the difficult part, and I know that my body can't take that, that, that training right now. I'm still fit. I can't run fast, 
you know, I can play football, I can do what I need to do to enjoy myself. That's where it is now, you know, I, I, I won't fool myself, you know, I see some people still trying to run at 39, 40 years old, which doesn't make much sense for me, you know, especially if you're not doing well, you're not, you're not, you're not everybody going to be, a, a, what's his name from St. Kitts? Kim Collins. Kim Collins, uh, yeah. or Shelly yeah. and Fraser. Not yeah. everybody, so you have to know your limits. If or Justin Gatlin, because he's... he's Gatlin. Yeah. If, if you're 30 or 33, 34, you realize that your body can't take it. You have to, just, you have to, you have to know that you, know, you, you leave it alone and you, and you channel your energy into something else that you love. Yeah, yeah. Listen, give, give some of the people, because for the, some of the persons who don't know, what, what is your fastest time in the 400? 4440 is my PR. 4440. Right. Oh right. boy, right. I know that that's true because you know, some 42 them money I run now, man. <laughs> some, some 43 <laughs> seconds. I mean, I could probably barely make the final with that. <laughs> right now. Yeah, because yeah, some mean athletes, <laughs> some mean athletes out there now, you know. I yeah, mean, man. like yeah. like what you think has has, has led to the, the faster times in the 400 coming from your era? Mm -hmm. I mean, these guys are experienced, um, better coaching, um, I mean, better equipment because so many times when I was running, I wasn't happy with my footwear. It wasn't the most comfortable thing, you know? And, and, and I think, but mostly it's, it's, it's down to, to, to coaching. Coaches have evolved now, you know? People are okay. research and, and there are different ways and a lot of them is no understanding. This is the main reason. That 400 is not a long distance, it's a sprint. So if you watch 400 now, no, there's nobody who jack out no more and I'll see if we run one minute. Everybody. It's a sprint from the beginning, from the beginning, yeah. it's a sprint. And, 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 and try to hold on and what you have to the finish. And that's, that is the major difference because I learned that the hard way. I was a jack out man and sprint to him. And the times that I was running was not compared to when we started run out fast. When I get out fast, we rather die to the line, but my times were way faster. So that's a major difference. People are now understanding that 400 is not a distant race, it's a sprint. So you have to sprint from the gun bus, you have to sprint. 400 meters are sprinting. Yes, it's yeah. a sprint race. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that's the fastest time 44 45. 44 40. 44 40. Give us, yeah. now, give us now some of the the, the 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 medals that you have won individual and team you know are probably the highest achievement um olympic medals how many olympic medals you have no i i didn't get a medal at olympics oh. i only did two, two olympics and, and as i said before yeah you didn't run in one and the other one I, yeah I, I yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Medal. i got a bronze medal and um at the world championship yeah on the four by four i was double bronze medalist at commonwealth games so you know six yeah Yes, okay. and I mean, don't I mean, I had a struggling senior career, especially when it comes out to the championship. Did, as I did, was did you win at the Pan Am Games? I didn't, I never went to a Pan Am Games. Oh, because because the injuries, because look at this, I was I was LT, I got injured in 03, I ran 04, I was injured in 05 again, I went 06, oh. I was injured in 07, Seven, yeah. I went to the real championship in 09 you know i didn't do that well and then my best year when i was probably the best quarter mile in the world at the time there was no major championship it was only the commonwealth and i didn't go to the command that's in 2010 a lot of people were saying boy guns this should have been an olympic year and this should have been a um a real championship year coulda woulda woulda coulda shoulda all of those things yeah what about the diamond league you also you also are a, you, did you ever were you ever the 400 meter Champion for Diamond League. I, I was second two years in a row, 2010 and 2011. Be behind, behind Warner. Be first one behind Warner, and then the second one behind Kiran. He actually lost the Diamond League by one point. Yes, the yes, Kiran and James Beatty on the final day. And that was only because they doubled the points on the final day. Yeah, whoa. Let me, let me, let me just get a charger real quick for this before. It yeah, goes. man, go ahead, go ahead and do that. All right, so people, listen. Listen, here's what you do. Come on, man. Shoot in your questions, you know, because we, 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 you hear what you're about to die. Big up Chris Lynch in the building, outer east. Guns used to shell down eastern, eastern, really? 
Eastern really, Eastern really, but I'm not from Eastern, man. Eastern really, big up Ricardo Baggio. Uh, big up, big up, Leon Minot in the building as well. Um, let me find out. Um, this is. Big up ones, what is in front? I and I have learned a lot. Enough respect. Thanks for representing our country. I salute you. Respect, respect. Yeah, man. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. yeah camera quality not that good this side, but I have to plug it in. You know? Oh, you have to plug it in, yeah, because we're not seeing we're not seeing if it's, it's almost like we're seeing a shadow. I don't know if you can if you can if you can turn around, put the cap put yeah, yeah, like let me try it. Turn it this way. Yeah, there you go. That's better, man. Yeah. Uh, Good. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, yeah. All right. Good. Wonderful. Um, um, so bring in the question. Somebody saying big up, big up gunners straight out of Orlando. So yeah, I don't man. know if he's representing you or he's representing me, the yeah. Arsenal man. Yeah, we don't really know. He's an Arsenal man too, so they know that as well. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Them time, the gunners too, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know that. Guns, People, let me tell gunners. you this. The man, the man box me on my face, you know, I'm not telling another part there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> After the man, you know, look out a couple of me. The other side, the man, I tried to look out the whole of the wisdom too, the whole other side of the face here. Yeah. I mean, I said, Reggie, the man say, all right, yeah. The man just say, all right. <laughs> yeah, man, you know, when you play football, you have to protect yourself, you know, so I was really trying to, you know. <laughs> but, uh, um, accidental. Uh, yeah, man, accidental. <laughs> I do think that actually bro feel as the potential to become a top contender. Yes, I, I I believe so. But until he get over the fear, until he accept that he's a quarter miler and not a sprinter, he's pro he's, he's one of our uh, most talented youngsters as well. So do you, do you, do you like speak to some of these youngsters and give them tips and say, listen, I watch your race and um you know, like like Hakim, have you ever met him to say, listen, you have to get over this fear? Like Chris Taylor, yeah. have you seen? It, the, th the thing about it is that um, I don't get the much, much opportunity to see these guys. You know, a lot of these guys are, are, are beasts. Overseas. Beasts. Yeah. And, and some of the time when you see them, is like at trials and stuff. You don't want to really, you know? Yeah. Get, and, and, then, and then I think that is something that the J tree should probably look into. Having I mean, persons like you coming as right, mentors right. and advisors, in, yeah, do they have the coaches? You could really like give tips, right? Especially Listen, at the high school the, level. The yeah. thing is so professional now, or should I say, like that people people refuse to to, to even let you you talk to them athlete no more. You know, a coach probably don't want you to say anything to the athlete, even when 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 you have the experience. And you're only okay. trying to help. So sometimes it's kind of it's not that easy. So sometimes you leave it alone, you know? Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. RR says, Auntie Pat and Christine with the team. Yeah, man. Auntie, big up Auntie Pat and Christine all the time. You know, can't forget oh, them. Yes, oh, so says so you. Yeah. They were called Gunners, not me. You see it, you know? So, so we get it clarified. Yeah, we get man. it clarified. We get it clarified. <laughs> so you say, at Papi you now coaching, I mean, what, what in terms of coaching is is that it for you or do you see yourself getting more involved you know like taking on at least quarter mile as possibly in the future i mean do you look out for talent like let me tell you there's a guy that they call um he was at calabar tall bremridge bremridge i think his name is um all right people let's see i think i think that maybe the, the, the thing wasn't plugged in properly but we're gonna have jeremy and, um he's going to come back so let's see if he's going to get that signed up and thing. But good, good interview. Like I said, if you have a question, please um, just punch them in. Let's just take uh, a few seconds and play for you a word from our sponsor. Tricknick Jerk Marinade gives your meats and vegetables authentic Jamaican jerk flavor. The spices are directly from Jamaica. Spices like jerk seasoning, allspice, scotch bonnet pepper, fresh scallions, thyme, ginger, and garlic. The key ingredients to a great jerk marinade. 0% sugar and low in sodium. You want to try it?
Yes, all right. So, I mean, many of you probably didn't know the amount of surgery that the athlete had to go through. And so sometimes the truth is we can be very harsh on people not knowing the full extent of situation. And that is why we ought not to be, we ought not to judge. Because people, I mean, mean people to complain about all of the injuries, but when you hear the kind of surgery that he went through on both knees, um, three surgeries, you understand me, the tumor, bone tumor, it coming back up. It is, it is not an easy thing. And to fight through all of that, one of the one of the, one of the the the, the 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 best young sprinter, won everything. You have to say at the youth level, right? Um, but injuries affected him at the senior senior level. Im imagine that. Um, many of us also felt like he was on the same trajectory as Usain Bolt. That, that both of them were going to go and grow through the system together. But injuries, both of them were having injuries too. You'd remember that early in, in, in Bolt's senior career, he had his own injuries, but he got over them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But I'm glad to know that he's still in track and field, still helping youngsters. He's at Papi in high now, conditioning youngsters um, for it. When he comes up, we're going to ask him where, you know, where, where, where does he go from here in terms of his, his coaching? How far does he want to go? But I think the idea that he also brought up is very important, that maybe we need to have persons like um, Jeremy and Gonzalez, the, the, the Usain Bolt, just probably take the quote, well, Jeremy and Gonzalez in particular, Probably talk to some of these quarter milers in Jamaica. It's an era that we seem to be. I think that the person, apart from Akeem Bloomfield, um, I may be missing somebody, Christopher Taylor, um, who is in 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 fought in the forty fives. You know that to get to the finals, no, you have to be under forty four. That's how fast the four hundred meters has gotten. You know, um, yeah, man, but what comments do you have? What question do you have for um, Jeremy? And he's going to come back on. Let's see a message here. So let's see. Um, I think the battery on the tablet died. You know, he said that he was going to get the charger. So maybe... Yeah, so he's going to join us back and then we will close out this interview. But he's a very good footballer. He, I mean, he always supports charity. He always plays in the Bring Back the Love football tournament as one of the celebrities. Always out there playing. Here we go. I think he's back now. All right. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I, I, it, it always better we can get it on. Um, don't know if that can work, but we can let it stay there. I can put it if you can put it on landscape, which is this way, it will be better. Okay, but, okay. Let me just turn it. Yeah, around. there you go. See, there you go. So if that can work, yeah, that can go. All right. So uh, let me go outside where the lighting is better. Yeah. Uh, I this, um, All right. So we have a couple more questions for you, and then. We'll release it because I know young son soon soon start calling and say daddy, daddy, daddy. So <laughs> but yeah, Bostama says, ask him if the heel up at six mile Barton help him to be such a good quarter oh, mile. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. Let me get a earphone. So because this phone is hardly oh, here, what you're saying. Yeah. You mm hearing -hmm. me now? You hearing me now? Hold on, give me a second. Hold on. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah, you hearing me now? All right, you hearing? Me? Yeah, man, I'm seeing you. And uh, we're seeing you. We're hearing you. Now. Are you hearing us? Yeah, man, it's Are a you... little bit low, but I can hear you. All right, so Boston must be saying, ask him if the hill up at six mile Barton help him to be such a good quarter miler. Oh, the hill up about. <laughs> I mean, you know, for us Jamaican, you know, that's one of the advantages that we have. You know, we live in a in a in a in a climate that is suitable for growth in terms of sport, because you know we have the opportunity to be outside all the time. Um, so from we young as a youth growing up, you know, we are climb tree and we are do all kind of things. So we are develop we are we athletic ability without even knowing it. You know. Yeah. yeah. This one says, I didn't know that the deg- I did I didn't know that the degree of yes. injuries were so serious. A lot of people. So Jermaine, please tell us a little about your own qualifications as a coach. Yeah, man, the injuries, the injuries was wicked, man. A lot of people didn't know. You know, but you know, being an athlete, you know, I've had a lot of experience. I I've been an athlete for Ah, for my life, you know, so I've been to the highest level, I've been to, you know, through the injuries, the ups and downs, you know, running slow, coming back from injury, you know, recovering and, and proving people wrong all the time. So I've gained a lot of knowledge. I've worked with some of the best coaches in the world. You know, I've worked with um, um, Mr. Coleman, Coach Coleman. I've worked with um, Bert Cameron. You know, I've worked with Glenn Mills and I've always been somebody who who don't just run, you know. I, I I was taught by them as as well when I was when I was training. I was always somebody who asked me a lot of questions about, you know, why am I doing this? You know, why we need to do this and you know how to prevent the injuries. Because actually my 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 injury problem before the surgeries you know, was always muscle. So I was straining my hamstring and stuff like that. And I, I went to Illinois in Chicago at the Gatorade Institute where you know, I was educated and 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 how important hydration is that I didn't know. I mean, I I never used to drink water until I went to training. You know, and and I learned that that that's not when you need the water. The water should be in the muscles before training, from the night before, from the days before. When you come to training, water is just to wash out the mouth and wash out the face and take a little sip and go again. You know, so I've learned so much. You know, by just doing the sport. And, and learning from different different coaches over the years. I mean, this has been my life for so long. So for me, it's, it comes natural, you know, to coach, you know, because I've, I've so much experience with all of these different coaches, all of these different injuries, running fast, running slow. So, you know, I, I know, you know, I know a lot from, from just, you know, living the life as an athlete. All right. So, so I'm going to get this one from Andrew Malseed. Hope I got that wrong. Right. He says guns is and Bert Cameron are two great 400 athletes and they need to be acknowledged more by all. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. No respect to Mr. Cameron, you know. Mr. Cameron is 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 probably one of the greatest to me and him argue about it, you know. Say who shall know where they better quarter mile about. Mr. Cameron was a great athlete. A lot of people don't know that this man run for almost three years for Jamaica and the 400 and never lose a race. Yeah, you know this man is our first world champion, so you know it was an honor, you know, to be coached by a man like this. And this come back to 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 what we were talking about about people who have been there and done it and how important it is to 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 to, to have the connection there, you know. Yeah. So I mean, I'm always open to to any one of the you them, you know, just to talk to them, you know, just to tell them what I think, um, you know, what I think. You know they need to do, or if uh, you know any little advice they may need, because you know, after all, we are Jamaicans, and you know, we want to see the team them do well. We want exactly. to win medal. We want to know says a Jamaican have the world record in, in all of the events them if we can, you know. Yeah, exactly. Who who did you look up to when you were running? Like like who are the person said, man? I mean, like you know, like all footballers, so they look up to Messi and Ronaldo. Or who who was that person that you were like, you know, you looked up to? Hold on, give me a second. I never, I never get that one clearly. Mm. 
All right, blessed, blessed. Oh, this is this is all right, all right. We're gonna we're gonna bring that up so you can see it when he comes back. And I think he's trying to get the tablet charged and all of that. Very unfortunate. Um, you know, the the the, the tablet his tablet died while the interview was going on, so he's using the phone. And you know, sometimes when a call or a text comes in it, it reduces the volume. But we are going to get that sorted out as we we have around 10 or so minutes. We may just extend it beyond that to an extra five because of the technical difficulties. And then we will close out the interview. But um, I like what he said about hydration. If you're a young athlete and you're listening, listen, don't drink the water on the day of the training or the event. It should be in your system and in your muscles from the night before. That's good advice. Good, good advice right there. Yeah, good, good advice right there. All right, you're back again. All right, you hear me now? Yeah, man, you're much clearer now. Yeah. All right, um, Andrew, and Andrew again just said, I am, I am also one of his biggest fan and brother. You understand me? Yeah, yeah. man, yeah, man. Over the years, you know, <laughs> big respect to Andrew. The man always supporting. You know, he's a genuine youth. I want to see with the good, and and he's one of the. You know, one of the fans that always stuck with me and believe in, in the potential and always giving encouragement, you know, is a, is a real good youth, a real friend, you know? Yeah, man. All right, so I was asking you earlier, like, who you used to look up to? Like, who, who like I said, like, listen, when, when, when you got into 400, this is a person who inspired or motivated you. Yeah, all right. To be honest with you, as I say, you, you realize we spoke about this earlier. I started out late. You know, I, I was second year class too when I started doing tracks. So I, I wasn't paying that much attention to track and field. Yeah, yeah. You know? So the first person I would say is not even Jamaican, is it, it, it's American, Michael Johnson, because Michael Johnson was a big superstar. Everybody know about Michael yeah, Johnson yeah, yeah. running with the gold spikes and stuff. So, you know, that's one of the person I was watching and saying, you know, but but when it comes down to Jamaica now, I, I would have to say um Greg Arton. You know, Greg Rotten, because yes. everybody know that famous, I know, flip and roll and, and the four <laughs> by four. And, yeah. and, 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 yeah. and Greg was probably one of, one of the, he, he is one of the greatest <laughs> 400 man in, in the region, basically, you know. Yes. Gregory was the trailblazer um, to me, for us, before the younger generation. So he kind of paved the way for me. You know, so I have to yeah. give a lot of respect to Gregory Arton. And I think Gregory Arton is one of the youth that we are try help as well. You know, I don't know how much he's been allowed to, 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 to you know, communicate with the athletes or even to, to be a part of the program. I don't know what Jaytree is doing, but he's one of them that was reaching out to me when I was running and giving me advice. And, awesome. and, and, yeah. and, 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 um, you know, I appreciate it. And, and, and it really, you know, went a far away in, um, Helping me with, with, with some of the things that I was doing. Yeah. And then this I think this is Courtney Bashcom says, great guy. Yeah. I had the opportunity to train with him. Not only a great athlete, but a great brother. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I uh, went to the same. Um, um, he was at um, what, the, um, High Performance Center. He's from oh. St. Vincent, I think. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, man, he's a, he's a good youth, somebody that kept in touch over the years and, awesome. you know, you know, always, you know, giving advice as well and support through the whole entire career. So, you know, I appreciate that, Courtney, man. No respect. Yeah, man. So you're going, you're going to, you're going to pick now, I mean, of course, Jeremy and Gonzalez, you need, you, you need your next three, all right, mm -hmm. to, to fill out your four by four team. Mm -hmm. For the gold medal, mm -hmm. right at the Olympics for Jamaica, yeah. who joining yeah. you? And that's an easy one, you know. And the great Berlin camera. Oh, all right. Yeah, go man, the great, the great Berlin camera. You have to give me you the know, order. Bro. You have to give me the order to you know, like who. All right, I'm going to give you them first, <laughs> and then give you the order. All right, I would say Berlin camera. Yeah. You know, Gregory Arton, yeah, uh, Davian Clark, and myself. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, um, everybody know that Davian Clark is probably one of the best really runners Jamaica has ever seen. You know, he's a consistent guy and somebody we can depend on for a forty three split who, who, at any who, time. Who is the best finisher, Davian Clark or Javon Francis? Well, I think 
I, I you, think um you were on the related with Javon Francis finishing up um running down what what the guy name from America. Oh gee, you were on that team? No, 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 oh, no, no, no. That was that was after okay. that was after, after when I was struggling with injuries. Yeah, yeah. So Davian Clark finishing. For me, for me, Davian Clark still get the hedge. I mean, Davian Clark is a little more consistent. He's yeah. he's not he's not that kind of uh say full blast like Javan Francis will get the back and run and, and you know catch everybody and no Davian. Do it with a little more experience, yeah, you know. Yeah, like take him time, time and, and yeah, yeah. right time him race yeah. better and and you know and Davian is very consistent. If you check the record with Davian, no, man, every time the man are running for forty three seconds, you know, and and him could be running forty seven over the four hundred flat, you know, just give him the button and he <laughs> give their forty three. They have to give him respect to that yeah. man. That's amazing, though. Yeah, that man, was... it's amazing. Me still think about it and wonder, oh, oh, this man, you know. Do it, but yeah. you know that that you know some people. So David Clark is David Clark is going to finish it. Yeah, who man. David, that be the anchor. We're on the third leg. I was I I would say why. <laughs> well, I would give Bert the lead off leg for sure. In between, I mean, well, it look like it, them relegate me to the third leg because I'd have Wait, to you're, put... you're not making sure that the button the button no button don't cross <laughs> no, over on this thing. <laughs> No man, I believe in Gregory, man. Gregory, 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 Gregory is like rules. serious. He knows man. the rules. He knows the yeah, rules. Man. So 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 I give myself, you know, I'm the dark ass on the turn leg. Like, nobody know about this man. This man I go I him I go make me win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Sir. So that's so my Bird four and that's the other. Bird Cameron to Gregory Harton to Jeremy and Gonzalez to, to Davian Clark. Clark. All right. right, all right, all right. All right. Mm -hmm. Um Gary Powell is asking um what happened why he disappeared off the scene i think he probably just joined but uh um, you can tell uh, him when when you stop running and and just remind him that it was because of injury he retired early yeah so man you um you know what uh, i feel like the kind of oh um the fans you know who was support me you know to all of them years that is why i wanted to talk to because a lot of people you just stopped and nobody didn't know you and you just disappeared unless they go watch bring back the love game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Um I really think we kinda oh as we said, the fans, the support, the people who have been there, you know, I, I, I apology in terms of the way I just went missing. But you know, if they were listening earlier, then probably them kind of understand why. You know, it was a tough, tough, tough um last couple of years for me doing track and field as i said before you know going to two knee surgery um two major knee surgery three surgery but only two was really major and and you know was struggling you know trying my best to get back there so it was it was rough it was rough and i kind of i kind of at one point wasn't even watching track and field to be honest with you you get to the point where i i don't even watch the races no more because every time I watch the races, it's like, you know, I get a little emotional because me I said, John, you know, you know, I should have been richer, more famous, or you know, just just to 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 to, to make my family proud and them something because I remember, you know, my family was watching the the, the, the world championship in 2011 and I won both the East and the semi-final and was looking to go, you know, better um in the final to probably get a medal and I finished fourth and one of the reasons why I finished fourth is what it was because my preparation wasn't good enough. I started training late because of the knee. So my background training wasn't as good. So for to, to be running three races consistently back to back three days. It was difficult. So I didn't have the energy, you know, and I'm sure at the time I was probably better than those guys that finished ahead of me, but it was because of the injuries, you know. So I always, you know, look back and say, why, you know, I think, you know, I would have won that race if it wasn't for, you know, the setbacks. But yeah, man, as I said before, I think I owe them an apology, you know, but when they, if they were listening, they would realize, you know, it was stressful, you know, it was painful, you know, at one point, as I said, I didn't want to watch a camp feel no more because, you know, all that I went through and I, I kind of did it by myself and my family. I must be uh, yeah, a big shout out to my family who, you know, has been there, you know, particularly my father 
and 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 my, my older sister Shane who's always you know been there through all the rough times with me and you know encourage us to stay sane you know because a lot of people been through things like this you know you see them on the street you know mad and, go through depression and, and, and all of those things yeah man because it's a mental thing you know man it, it tough for you when you know say boy you give your heart to something because remember you know, i give up i i give up um going to college overseas and stayed in jamaica and you know basically commit my my whole life to this and i was doing good and you see, when you know you have the potential, you have it. It's not like you don't have it, you know. You have it, but because of these injuries and these little mishaps, you keep, you know, left. In, you keep um, ending up disappointed most of the times, you know. So it was tough. So, you know, it's just one of them things there. You know, I'm still around and I'm active back in the sport, coaching, you know. So, you know, I'm, 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 at the end of the day, I look back and, and from where I'm coming from, I'm happy with where... I am now, you know, a lot of youths that I grew up with are still on the corner not doing nothing. You know, I could be one of those, but Chaffa, Chaka and Feelers, you know, offer me that, 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 that get out route where, you know, I can make something of myself and, you know, I can be pleased with my life right now. You know, so I always give thanks for, for, for the sport that Chaka and Feel and for Jamaica and my family who, you know, it was there for me when I was doing it. And all the fans, them, man, big up all the time. Well, uh, listen, I want to say big respect because a lot of person, big, a lot of respect for you for being, you know, open and honest enough to say, listen, I just disappeared without saying anything to the fan and apologizing for that because, listen, the people loved you. Let me tell you something. Like I say, you and Usain Bolt revived track and field. Yeah, um, from your youth, that, that whole thing that was building between you and him and him coming through, it was Usain Bolt, Jeremy and Gonzalez. And um, listen, the other thing I want to say is so a lot of respect, right? One of the other things I'll say is this, that I love about what happened with you. I've seen, because when, when you check it, you know, people don't realize that, all right, so 2002, 2003 injuries, so 2004. All right, then you miss out 2005, 2006. You miss out 2007. And eight. And eight. I went to the World Championship in 2009. Nine. All right, then 2000. Right. So when you check the years, it's really around five years. Like you'd say, five good years of seeing it. Out, like seeing a track and yeah, field really had to an extent, you know. People don't realize that it was a and very sharp when window. You, <laughs> when you look at it, you know. It shows the quality of the athlete because once yeah. this man is healthy, he's always on Jamaica team representing, and you have tons of people trying to make the team every year. You yeah. see what I said? So everybody will know me, as I say, and, 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 and know the struggles, know that it's just the injuries. Once I was healthy, I was representing Jamaica. It is yeah. never a case where I was running and didn't make the team. Yeah. I always make the team once I'm running. But I also will say that in the time that you have done, listen, you have managed. I mean, God is so good that you have managed to be able to, you know, build home for your family and things. Because a lot of people in that time squander a lot of things, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so you may not be, like I said, you look back and say, boy, if you weren't injured, you could have. But, you know, the time that you have, you have maximized your resources and mm -hmm. made something in your life. Like I said, you're not on the corner, so we give. You know, we have to give thanks for that. But given the time of injuries in your career, it is tremendous the things that you accomplished in terms of your, your track and field career at the senior level because your career was such, was plagued by so many injuries. But still, people still remember Jeremy and Gonzalez. I mean, like I said, in the last 20 years, tell me the person that has won more. Like when you go on the Diamond League circuit, I think the person who came the closest was Akeem Bloomfield. Probably in his first pro year, he was doing a couple of races, ran some good times, but he wasn't even in the reckoning in terms of the top four. And mm -hmm. two seasons in a row, you were number two for in the, the 400 in, in the, the world and the Diamond yeah. League circuit. Yeah. And people like, I don't, and I mean, I know statues are being built for people and all of them things, but I'm not saying that. Maybe they don't think that, but I'm saying that because they may be doing it for gold medalists. But man, yeah, even yeah. the community that you're from, mm -hmm. man, meant somebody needs to set up because I, I don't know nobody else from all um your community. Do you understand me? So right. even all right, so fine. If you're not going to get an Olympic gold medal, 
bam, you can't be up at the stadium. But there are other places in Jamaica where you come from, where recognition, right, right. I think, because right. I think I think Jamaica need to recognize and appreciate what you have done. Because you you're you're after the bird Cameron and all of those guys, and probably even the Davian Clark when things were going down, you and you saying bolt brought back the sports up. And then Asafa Paul came in with the sprinting and Shelly and the Veronica. On the female side, we always had people. But on the male side, you guys brought that yeah, back. Man. Yeah, man. yeah. I see Gary Powell here also saying, um, is he watching track and field now? And if so, who are the 400 runners in Jamaica that he think have the tools to get to the next level? I think he answered that already. But <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um... I'm back in the sports full time now. As I said before, I'm coaching, you know, at prep school and high school level. And I'm back active watching. And I mean, I said it before in the 400, we have a lot of potential. But as I said before, a lot of them, um, I think they're afraid of the event. Everybody is, is more high in the, 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 the 100, the 200, the glamour events. But people like Nathan Allen, you know, people like Akeem Broomfield, um, Christopher Taylor, you know, and 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 I probably have a couple of few that I can't remember the names off the top of my head now. But until they start, you know, accepting the distance and, and respecting the distance and working towards it, you know, it will be a struggling next five, six years for Jamaica until we find somebody who's who, who's ready to, to take on the challenge because the 400 is a challenge, you know, man. <laughs> it's a real yeah. challenge, you know. Yeah. Yeah man. yeah, yeah, man. Gary, no, man. I know that Asafa was, no, hey, hey, you see, money and Paul, you watch, I know, Gary, Paul, you know, so man, all, Asafa, Paul, hey, yeah. no, no, where, where Gary <laughs> now, remember, Gary is talking about senior level, but in right. that, yes, the junior yeah. level, junior level, Paul, level. Paul yeah. was before, because Paul was a junior at the time when Asafa just uh, doing thing. I think right. Paul is, remember, at Real Junior 2002, you know, that's when some Big name breakout, you know, and then people that was before that Asafa, Asafa breakout in 2003, 2004, them time there. Yeah. But 2002, 2001, you have people like Anisha McClacken. That um, was the champs, me, man. The, the whole champs, that whole season. Yeah, man. We were, we, we were before yeah. Asafa, them. It's on that we were at a junior level. Junior level. To the senior yeah. level. So we were before them. Asafa came right after, after, after. World after, juniors, the world juniors, everybody... after the World Juniors when yeah, man. right. Yeah, man. Right. That's how I came after. So the difference was that we were at junior level. Yeah. Yeah, but that kind of brought that whole junior world junior ch tra championship with the and, and uh, that whole time right there between around 2001 to around 2003. Yeah, the recess, the, the if recess you remember, you know, yeah. if you remember the names that was at World Junior, you know. We talk about Simone Facey. Facey. We talk yeah. about Kerian Schwartz. We talk about Anisha McClack. We talk about Jeremy Mason, all right, be my friend. You understand? Jeremy yeah, Mason sure. that went and, and did yeah, get silver medal yeah, yeah, for yeah, Great yeah. Britain. That still has Jamaica national record, you know? So, yeah, so yeah man, we were we were before, you know, most of the name. We were the trailblazers. Siku Clark even went to that World Juniors too. Who? Se yeah, Seku, yeah. Seku, Seku ran on the 4x4, four four, the first leg, yeah. Remember yeah, yeah, that? yeah, he was on the 4x4, four four. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, man, so, so, we <laughs> say we always boast about it, you know. You know, we might not, not reach at the level where some of them might reach international in terms of breaking world record and getting gold medal and silver medal at the Olympics, but we are star before them, you know, man. <laughs> yeah, man, we are star before them, man, we are still star, you know. It's a youth yeah. where, where, where um love myself, you know, and, and, and try to enjoy life regardless of what happened, because things could have worse, you know? Yeah. All right, yeah, so... Man, um, so Tuffy, 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 give thanks to yeah, you. Yeah, bless up. Tuffy really says, Jeremy, thanks for all you did. Enough respect to you. You are my number three all-time 400 meter Cabrian Rona. Only be a <laughs> Cameron and Alberto... One thirty, you know, yeah, I've heard to one thirty that the boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him know, him know where I say. <laughs> you know, honored, honored to be mentioned in, in, in such high caliber, you know? Yeah. Athlete. yeah, man, enough respect. Yeah, man. Final one, and then we will let you close up. Jeremy says, Do you think yeah, some of the sprinters, one hundred and two hundred guys, should really concentrate on on running? Uh, yeah, man, definitely, definitely. Because 100. guess what? 
you have some people running some 10 tools and some 10 trees and that's not gonna be good enough for the for the for the for the um the hundred meter you know and a lot of them can't take on the challenge at the 400 but as i said before and i it's say the yeah. word challenge for a specific reason because the 400 is a challenge and not everybody is willing to put in that kind of work but a lot of them that is trying to run the 400 um, the 100 meter the 400 would probably better suit some of them but everybody want to do the glamour event and, and and some people just can't manage the 400 training they don't want to train for the 400 mm. don't worry man you, you're going to start building some of those youngsters uh, we, i said that was the last one but i think this is your sister so i had to put it up she said so proud of you my brother your humility forever stand out against all in the track Wow. Yeah, man, that's my sister, you know, somebody who has been there for me from birth. You know, one of my biggest supporter, one of my biggest fan, you know, somebody that I love dearly, you know. Since yeah, you know, we love there and we appreciate everything the same way. Yeah, all right. You, you're the tallest one in the family, right? Yeah, well, my sister is tall as well, but not, not <laughs> that. You know, and from then, I know I was a blessed child, you know. You know, so I give thanks now. If you see my mom and my dad and my brothers and you wonder why all me get the height they're from. Because my mother and father is like here. You know? So from them times I kinda realized that I was I was I was blessed. God made me special for something else. Cause you know, yeah, normally yeah. you don't get a tall man like me with a short That's family. Right, so so I must appreciate hey, listen, it. You know? Why don't we wait so long for bring up all the questions? Eh? We can't understand it. Look how long we're here. <laughs> Ask him what race was his most memorable race? Ah, uh, it, it is 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 between the record and world party. juniors it's between the record the 400 record that i did in 2020 at monica but i would i would give world juniors a hedge you know the atmosphere in that stadium was was something else i've never run no world junior got third. yeah i got third and that um, and that I, is your favorite race <laughs> <laughs> No. Not because of the, 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 the what I came or, or, yeah. or the time that I ran, but the atmosphere you know, and just representing your country, you know, and, and seeing the crowd and everybody going wild. The atmosphere was a different kind of atmosphere. You know, go nowhere in the world, go experience nothing like this. Nowhere in the world. If you ask both, both probably tell you the same thing too. The Royal Juniors was, was, was probably the most memorable race or the best place I've ever run. And ninety percent of the people them that run at Royal Junior would probably say the same thing Whoa. because listen, nobody don't know if it's cheer like Jamaicans, you know. Jamaicans Whoa. when when them have when them proud of you know and them are cheer for you know, it's a different kind of vibes, you know. Yeah, you yeah. know. You remember who beat you in because um who was first and second? Yeah, man, I was I was I was beat by two Americans. I think one of them in uh, Darren Williamson and, and um. I can't remember the last name of the guy. I think he named Fortenberry or something like that. Yeah, man, I was I was only beaten by Americans, you know, at the time. And at that time, you know, American was a powerhouse. Mm -hmm. And probably still is in the 400. So, so it wasn't a little normal man to beat me, you know. <laughs> Just make that clear. It wasn't a little normal man. It was some <laughs> top American quarter mile. You see, they're saying LeSean. No, it was Lashan. Lashan. Oh, I'm older than Lashan. Lashan, Lashan, Lashan was who came after, yeah. Lashan Murray. No, no, he was not at no, the World Juniors. Yeah. All right, all right. Do you think? Do you think with the new spikes, your time would be a lot faster? Of course. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. He was comfortable. He said that earlier. I was comfortable with his footwear sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. For sure, man. Um, technology, you know. Make everything better, you know. But, uh, we I learn and everything I get better. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right, sir. Guns, listen. So I mean, we 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 at the end. Um. So what do I talk to the fans, to your family? The the last words are yours. Listen. But before you get there, thank you for representing the the country. You're one of my favorite. You're one of my favorite athletes, you know. Yeah. Just because I get your humility, and then listen, I'll tell people this every time I see the charity game. No matter how busy you are, you turn yeah, up man. for busy. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, man. I must mention Mr. Busy as well. Mr. Busy was my manager back in the oh, days when I was running. So I so so that. that's where the connection made. And 
And Mr. Busy has been supporting not just me, no man. Mr. Busy was an integral part with Usain Bolt. You know, a lot of people may not know this. Mr. Busy was one of the, 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 the man behind, you know, our success as well. Mr. Busy took care of me like a father when we came to Kingston, you know. Whoa. So busy took care of me like a father and make sure we're alright. Me and Bolt and and, and and I make sure we're good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. But I would say, um, the little man, I give me trouble, you know. That's who yeah. I be that. But but as I must say, you know, I um, I, much respect and thanks to all the fans, you know, who have been there for me throughout the years, <laughs> and 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 most the females. You know, big up all the female, and most the female fans. Some old lady will see me each day. Go, you know that you are my favorite athlete and stuff. You know, I want you all to know that me appreciate the support, man, and I appreciate the shout out when you see me on the street. Don't be afraid to say guns are gone because you know me appreciate all I know. And to my family, you know, you know I'm a family man, as I said before. Who family has always been a, a strong part of my development. You know. My father, my sister, all of my brother, them. My mother is is probably somebody who would not like the crowd, so she always watch it on TV. But she's been yeah. there too. You know, I appreciate all of you, man, and I'm still here, still working to make all of you proud, man. As a coach now, you know, developing yeah. the youngsters. And maybe, maybe we'll see. Maybe, maybe my next interview will be with the younger with the little now. man, right? <laughs> and he loves it, you know. He loves the running. <laughs> Yeah man. There you go. Yeah, man, but thank you so so much. Really, really appreciate the time with you. Um, you know, um, you wishing you all the best in your coaching career. Hope one day we'll see you, you know, coaching some athletes and the Diamond League at the Olympics at the World Championship and what you didn't accomplish personally that you can help some other athletes um accomplish those things, winning Olympic gold medals and those things. But it was such a joy. Um, talking to you, continue to be humble, man, and, and continue. Yeah, man, respect, man, and thanks for having me. Anytime, man, and you know that when Gunners up again, we, you know, we come and contact some Gunners football. And all yeah, man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they're up again, because they're not yeah, so next nice. Season, so. Next season, our season, yeah, that's uh, next season, our season. We go try to. All right, my boss, man. Take care, yeah, man. and Best thanks for having me again. Every time. All respect. Right. All right, so there you go. People, what a wonderful, wonderful time um, with Jeremy and Gonzalez. Listen, real, genuine, humble, honest, um, hardworking person. And, and uh, many of you, um, probably you're watching this interview and you didn't know just, just what he had been through. And it's not easy knowing you have so much talent locked up on the inside of you. But physically, your body can't carry it. And he went away from the sport. And people don't talk about him a lot in mainstream media. I mean, um, like I said, he was part of the springboard of the resuscitating track and field. I'm, I'm not here advocating that, you know, a statue at the national stadium. But we have to find a way of honoring athletes like Jeremy and Gonzalez. I mean, everything at the junior level. And so um, maybe the community, maybe Tatius Golden, I don't know. I don't know. But we have to find a way of showing respect for persons who dedicated such time, not just in football, but in track and field and other sporting discipline to this nation. We don't realize how blessed we are as a people. How blessed we are as a people. So I want to thank you for those of you who are in positions to mobilize people. St. Catherine, mobilize people and say, listen, let us do something for Jeremy in October. That community that he's from, do something. All right, so bless up, bless up. Tuffy Rudy, I really can't, I'm really not able to do that because I have to pay tribute to 
my my humble guest who dedicated this time and it would not be fair of me to to take on the question at this time i respect you you know that but i will do it tomorrow for you and get deep into it and give it the answer all right so tomorrow i can do that for you all right but definitely i'm not going to do that today on this on this interview because of the level of respect i have for my guests who just came and shared this story so thank you so so much um, for watching please hit the like button if you have not yet subscribed to the platform please do so as we continue to provide for you good sporting content i'm my name's man this has been i am sure sports um have yourself a wonderful wonderful weekend and please stay safe Mr. I am sure sports. Dog, SK New Artist. The body you there, Sniper King, I represent for I am sure sports. You get to me, I say, when you want the latest news and sports and updates and all of that, check out I am sure sports. You know the thing was in. Member, cover the whole island. Member, Kingston, Westmoreland, Galchester, Ocherius, Galtigo Bay. Everywhere. I am sure sports. Check it out for the latest news and latest updates. Sniper King, I represent. Where them feel like. Ha. Yeah, some are known for the food from young from the day you need height. I am sure sports. Yeah, dog. <laughs>